Good evening, my name is Father Mark Wise. I'm a Redemptorist missionary here in the parish of Our Lady of Guadalupe, Newton Grove, North Carolina. I'm speaking to you from the house chapel of our residence where the three of us, three Redemptorist missionaries reside. I'd like to welcome you to the reflection on this third Sunday of Advent, a call to joy. So let us pray. O oh God, who see how your faith people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation, and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and great rejoicing. And we ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. So I'd like to share with you the first reading from the liturgy of this Sunday. We usually proclaim the gospel, but I think this reading speaks more to the theme of this, this liturgy. And it's from the prophet Isaiah and says the following. The Spirit of the Lord God has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord. In my God is the joy of my soul, for he has clothed me with the robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. And as the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So my brothers and sisters, have you at any time ever known joy? It's that experience that, well, brings a smile to our lips and laughter to our throat, and maybe tears to our eyes. Because what has happened has touched us so deeply and totally that it just wells up from within and overflows from our eyes in a torrent of tears. It gives us joy. For us football fans, it may be that moment when our team drives down the field in the final moments and scores that winning touchdown to, to win the game in the last few seconds. And there are those cheers and those roars and that pumping of the fists. There's joy. Or maybe it's that day of the birth of your first child. And there you are in the hospital bed, looking down on him or her in the crook of your arm, wrapped in a blanket, sucking on that thumb, and what do they say? There he or she is, that bundle of joy. Or maybe it's the day of your wedding when you walk down the aisle and the eyes of everyone were upon you and your lips quiver with joy. Or perhaps that day when you received an envelope and you opened it, realized that a college or a university had accepted you and what did you do? Well, you leap for joy. Or maybe that moment when you went to the airport to uh, pick up a revered family member or a lifelong friend and you caught sight of him or her as he or she came out of the terminal. And there was that ripple of joy that passed through you. It could be something as simple as receiving a letter or a phone call from someone that 
takes you by surprise. For myself, I can remember that moment when I professed my vows for the first time in the congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer in my home parish of Sacred Heart of Jesus in Baltimore, Maryland, some 55 years ago. For that summer morning in the chapel of our seminary when the Cardinal of New York, Terence Cook at that time, imposed hands on myself and my classmates and ordained us Redemptress priests some 48 years ago. Moments of joy. I hope we've all had moments like that. Moments of joy that, well, they uh, give us that joy because something has happened that pleases us, has realized our expectations, and they bless or enrich us, or brought something or someone into our lives that was not there before, and give us a sense that it is and it will be for the best. It gives meaning, sense, and direction to our lives. It gives us joy. And that indeed is the spirit of this third Sunday of Advent. It's called in Latin, Gaudete Sunday, from Paul's letter to the Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, Gaudete in Domino, rejoice in the Lord. Again I say, rejoice. So it weaves in and out of all the readings. So yes, we heard in Isaiah today, I rejoice heartily in the Lord. In my God is the joy of my soul. And if you follow on in the responsorial psalm, there it is again. My soul rejoices in my God. And Paul in the second reading exhorts the Thessalonians with his rejoice always. And even the vestments of that Sunday get into the swing of things. They're rose colored. And so they lighten and brighten things up as we come to the halfway point of our preparation for the great feast of Christmas. So we move from that somber shade of violet to that rose color to lift our spirits. I think of that moment early in the morning when everything is dark. And then there on the horizon you see the first rays of the sun, which may be rose-colored. And with that, everything is changed and transformed. And the rays of the sun reach out to us to greet and embrace, embrace us. And with that, they give us another reason for joy, the gift of another day. So this is Jesus' joy caused by him for who and how he is, for whom John the Baptist prepared the way. It's about him, this Jesus, Jesus' joy. So I guess I would ask you, after speaking about many reasons for joy, if you would just take out some time today, or maybe just during the week, to sit quietly in the presence of the Lord, to look at him and let him look at you and just ask yourself, does he, this Jesus, in some way give me joy? Because this December 25th is not just some happy holiday, some bland, superficial, feel good, whatever. Far from that. It's about this Jesus who didn't just show up, but because of his coming and dwelling in our midst, this world has changed and has never been the same again. So as I sit before him, 
or better yet, as I kneel before him, I realize that this Jesus has called me by name. It's not some generic, hey, you. He's called me by name, Mark. And he's called me into being not so much out of chaos, but out of love and destined me to be loved and embraced from it by him today to more always to the horizon to the depth and beyond and in keeping with what isaiah says this jesus yes so many times has healed my broken heart and he's given me liberty and release from all that would make me a prisoner and a captive all those sins and fears and anxieties. He is the one, as we hear in the responsorial psalm today, who has done great things for me. And if we had time, I would tell you that, all those great things he has done for me. And he showed me his mercy again and again and again. And it would take even longer to tell you about that. He's filled me with good things during my 74 years of life. This Lord Jesus has given me joy. Now someone, when they hear all this, may say, what is he talking about? Doesn't he know what's going on in this country and in, the, in this world? so much sickness and dying and death with this virus and all the political, social, and economic upheaval. Doesn't he know about that? Yes, I do. Now we here in Newton Grove may be in the country, surrounded by fields of sweet potatoes and soybeans and cotton, but we too are never far from what has impacted all of us during these past months. So someone might say, well, if that's the case, it seems like there's more than enough reasons not to be joyful, but to be sad. Well, the situation is certainly going to be with us for a while. But nonetheless, nonetheless, we are preparing for the one who comes and is in our midst and remains with us, the one who is before us and beside us and above us and below us and behind us and with us and will continue to be with us to the horizon and beyond. As I said, this is Jesus' joy. This is not some superficial, hearty, ho-ho type of joy. This is a joy that goes beyond words. It's a joy that wells up from the innermost depths of our being because of the one who comes. And as John the Baptist, that John the Baptist who leaped for joy in the womb of his mother Elizabeth when Mary and Jesus visited them. It's John the Baptist who tells us that this Jesus is in our midst, is in our midst. And he pointed him out saying, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins, and I add the fears of the world. He is the one with his presence who gives us peace, despite all and everything that's swirling around us and within us. So brothers and sisters, look to him, look to Jesus, today, tomorrow, always. And I say to you with Paul, rejoice in the Lord, in the Lord. And again I say, rejoice. So let us pray. O God of all good, you sent John the Baptist 
to announce the good news of Christ's coming. Send us to live lives illumined by the gospel, that we too may be a source of joy in your promise, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain with you always. So I thank you for joining us and sharing in this Redemptress online preaching. And I ask you to be with us this Saturday, December the 5th, as we begin the Tweedawum for the preparation for the great feast of the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of Mary.